finally, after months and months of what felt like nothing but retro bikes, open face helmets, beards, roll bottom jeans, and uh, retro heritage style stuff to ride on Bike World, we get the chance to ride something with a bit of performance. We've been waiting a long time to get our little hands on this new Triumph Street Triple RS. We went to Spain, Catalonia, MotoGP track. The ingredients were all there. It was going to be perfect. And then it <laughs> pissed it down. So as we saw at the London Envale a couple of months ago, the hype was very, very real with the Street Triple. Increased capacity, all new electronics, tweaks to the chassis, new swing arm design, move the swing arm pivot, all these little bits and pieces, upgraded brakes, amazing suspension. So there are actually three new models of Street Triple and there are five variants within those three models. So there's an R, an S and the RS. The RS was the only bike that we rode out in Spain. There's also an A2 license friendly version. There's also a low seat friendly version. We should say now that the A2 license friendly version is the only one that comes with the existing or outgoing 675 triple. All the other bikes in the range benefit from this stunning new 765 triple. So the spec sheet is absolutely dripping with the kind of techno perv that gets, gets me going. Surely it gets you going. We're talking Brembo M50 calipers with a Brembo master cylinder, mated to show a big piston forks with an Olin's STX piggyback shock out the back, coupled with beautiful Pirelli Diablo Super Corsa SP tyres. It's the perfect recipe for middleweight roadsters and the perfect recipe for the best street triple ever made. So that 765 motor has over 80 new parts in comparison to the outgoing 675 motor. You get new pistons, new crankshaft, comrods, Nicosil liners. They've gone through the whole thing from bottom to top. The result is 121 horsepower and about 77 newton meters of torque. On paper alone, it looks and sounds amazing. On the road, it looks and sounds amazing. <laughs> That motor perfectly complements the changes that Triumph has made to the chassis. The new swing arm design, they've shifted the swing arm pivot. The whole thing is a little bit more aggressive, there's a little bit more weight over the front. It's, it's kind of gone a little bit further down that super sport road. Finally, a chance to get on the bike, get out and ride the roads in Spain, make our way to Catalonia and have some fun. So jump on, stick a key in the thing, and the TFT screen comes to life. There's a ginormous array of choices that you can have. You spend a little bit of time setting the screen up for you. If you're into Star Wars, you can make it look like Star Wars. Uh, if you're into retro stuff, there's a retro style. It's basically as futuristic as you want to get it, where the, where the, the rev needle doesn't just sweep round. It kind of comes up round the sides. It does absolutely everything. Essentially, all the information is still in there. A little bit gimmicky for me, but the tech is is absolutely on point. It's really, really good stuff. Um, and you can play with it. If you're one of those people that just likes to sit and tinker and get things just how you want them before you go for a ride, this bike is made for you. A little joystick on the left, a couple of buttons on the right. It is pretty intuitive. You can get used to using it and you'll figure out how to, how to set the thing up to make it work for you visually, as well as the rider modes that we'll come to that you can use out on the road. I know lots of you will be sitting at home going, no, I do everything uh, like this. Traction control lives in here. I've said it before, I'm not that kind of rider. So along with that TFT screen, there is a bunch of rider modes that you can choose from as well. Rain, road, sport, track, and rider. Each one very different. Each one lends itself to a road riding environment or a road riding condition that you'll need to put up with. The 675 in the 10 years that it's been in existence and the 50,000 units that they've sold in showrooms like this one uh, is a big hitter. It's the kind of bike that when you're putting road tests together, it's almost like you can feel the rest of the bikes in the test shrugging and packing their kit up and going home. It's just such a good bike for the money. It's such a good bike because it has the perfect balance of power, performance, ease of use, and accessibility for every kind of rider. If you're a new guy, you'll get on with the Street Triple. And also, if you're a lady, this bike has that ease of getting both feet on the ground. I know confidence with ride height is quite an issue with lots of lady riders. This bike does that too. So all that new power, all that new performance, all those new trick rider bits to play with, and unfortunately for us, it did rain quite heavily out in Spain. We can't dwell on it, it is what it is. We had to get stuck in, uh, which is exactly what we did. Now, this is gonna sound a little bit negative, but I'll get to the reasons why in a bit. 
I was a tiny, tiny bit underwhelmed with the first half an hour on this bike. The reasons why I think were because I had, I'd, I'd built it up to be just like the outgoing 675, but bigger and better. And it kind of is, but that, that increased capacity with the motor, the increased focus on it being more super sports than, than kind of performance road bike, for me just meant that you have to tuck in and work a little bit harder to find the bits of the street triple that are very good in this new model that you could find within seconds and by the end of the road on the outgoing version. You have to work a little bit harder to get into the good bits of the 765. That's no bad thing. Like we said, on paper, the front end should be amazing, and on the road, it was amazing. But you've just got to tuck in, try a little bit harder, go digging into those corners a little bit more, push your luck a little bit, carry a little bit more corner speed, and you'll see just how capable this 765 is. The point that I'm trying to get at isn't that this bike is bad, it's just that the other bike, the outgoing version, was very, very good at doing all things for all men. This is slightly more focused and slightly more of a super sport bike than you probably think. A test ride will prove to you what I'm getting at. It's not a bad bike. You've just got to try a little bit harder and go a little bit faster and have a little bit more fun than you probably think you do. And you definitely, sorry, I'm waffling. So this bike surely should appeal more to more people I'm waffling against. What I'm saying is this. The new 765 Street Triple is amazing on the road. It's just very different to what I expected. A little bit more like the Speed Triple than it is like the existing street triple. There, said it. Road riding manners were ace. Great on the brakes. You would think M50's big, scary, litre sports bike brakes work perfectly with this bike. Changes direction perfectly, holds a line. All those bits and pieces on paper translate into a fantastic road riding experience. The point that I was trying to get at earlier about the performance being tucked further around the rev range is fine if you're happy to go looking for it. Just hang on to the revs, the bike comes alive. Everything is in perfect tune with everything else. There are some bikes out there from other manufacturers where the motor is all singing and all dancing and the brakes and suspension can't cope and can't keep up. This isn't one of those bikes. We made our way through the slop, through the puddles, past all these crazy Spanish truck drivers who seem to be hell-bent on killing all of us. And eventually we made it to Catalonia circuit, a MotoGP circuit for a naked 765 street bike. A ballsy move from Triumph, I think. If anything, it just shows how confident they are in the performance and capability of this bike. This is effectively a naked super sport bike, so on track is where this bike for me felt the most at home. That little rev range that I couldn't quite find on the road unless I was absolutely hanging the thing out was all there for me to use wherever I wanted it. It was absolutely brilliant fun on track. Made learning a new circuit like Catalonia very, very easy. It's an easy bike to ride fast. Not massively, massively powerful. You're not clinging on and hanging onto the thing while it bucks and weaves and goes all over the place. Those brakes make sense. That suspension makes sense. Those rider modes, once you've played with them and you've, you've got them how you want, they make sense as well. This bike makes more sense on track for me than it did on the road, bizarrely. Unfortunately, after that first 20, 25 minute session, we came in, heavens opened and it rained. But the great thing about this bike for me and the big thing that I took from the launch was how confidence inspiring this whole package was. I didn't know when it was lashing with rain that everybody else in my session and in my group had come in. And basically I had the Catalonia circuit to myself. I was riding around and around and around. I wasn't going particularly fast, but where I was able to lean on the traction control, start finish straight as fast as it would in the dry. On the brakes, a couple of times I outbroke myself, ran off the track or ran wide, but that's, uh, that's a confidence issue that I found in you know, I was placing lots of confidence in the bike, but I didn't actually have the skill set to, to tap into to do what I eventually would end up having to do. Street Triple RS, a mega bike. It's going to be great fun. I do wish that I'd had the chance to ride it in the dry. I do wish that I'd had the chance to ride it for a little bit longer than we did. Spring isn't far away. Summer will be here soon. Dealers like this one that we're sat in now are going to have these things sat there waiting for people to test ride, and I'm going to be one of the guys that jumps on them. On that note, there are a couple of other bikes that will follow after the RS. So there's the 9,990 pound top of the range RS that we've just been talking about. And there's the 8,900 pound R. Then there's the 8,000 pound S. And then beneath that, you have the A2 version, which like I say, has the existing motor in it rather than this new big ball 765. 
uh, and there's a low seat height version available as well. The price point for me is a little bit higher up the tree than I expected it to be, but you don't get all of that tech for free. These things cost money. Development costs money. It's that simple. Is the RS worth the asking price? 100% yes. Is it the perfect bike for you? Well, I can't answer that. You're going to have to go and ride one for yourself. This could be the perfect middleweight roadster.